Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 637. If you have sarcopenia, you have poor muscle mass, but why is that unhealthy? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and I'd like to welcome you to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today, we're going to talk about uh, a word called sarcopenia. And every time I say that word to patients, they don't know what it means. So it really means that you ha- that a person or a, um, a patient does not have enough muscle mass to be healthy. So it, sarco means muscle, and penia means small. So it means... A, a loss of muscle mass. But every time I say that, when I'm talking to a patient, um, I remember the Saturday Night Live episode with Eddie Murphy, who uh, talked about pyromania. <laughs> and that's exactly what I think of every time I say sarcopenia. <laughs> and if you remember that, he's, he's standing at a, an easel talking about, at, trying to explain the definition of pyromania. And um, it was if you're old enough, you'll remember that. It was back in the 80s. So in any case, we're going to talk about sarcopenia. Um, the, the muscle throughout your body not only makes you look good, hold your, hold your insides in, and um, may, gives you the ability to walk, sit, talk, listen. Um, and for me, you know, I have to use my hands to talk. So Um, I use my muscles even more than most people. But um, having good muscle, healthy muscle, and muscle that is uh, actually strong is very important to healthy aging. Um, most Most of us don't know the basics about muscle. We just think that it's moving us around. Oh, yeah, we have muscles. We want to go to the gym. We want to look good. We want to have good muscle mass, so we're going to lift weights or run or exercise. But muscles require a lot of care and tending, and you have to understand how they work for you to actually uh, get good muscle mass and strong muscles. So uh, for um, people over 70, muscle mass goes away and people start losing weight. They lose their muscles, then they lose their bone strength. Their, Their bones get smaller, thinner, break more easily, and they get to be fragile people. So they us- those folks usually look like they're kind of bent over. Or they may have to use something to help them walk, or they may not be able to walk anymore because they don't have enough muscle mass. That may be for lots of reasons, but one of the big reasons is as we age without testosterone, uh, our muscles start shrinking. They don't remain like they are when we're 40 as a woman or 50 as a man, they take a lot more effort to make muscle. And then at some point, it doesn't matter how much effort you put into making muscle, you can't make it without testosterone. Testosterone is the key hormone that you need to build your muscles up. So when we look at patients and we see that they are frail or they have sarcopenia, we know that they have aged And as they are aging, they're getting less healthy and closer to death. So um, you can exercise every day, and I think that's a good idea, but you can exercise every day and eat protein-rich foods, and um, you can still be sarcopenic. And that's because you don't have that one hormone, which is testosterone. I'm hoping that after um, the last 20 years of talking about the things that testosterone does for us and why it should be replaced, that the next generation of people, people in my age category or younger, will not be sarcopenic and will not 
have an early death from falls or uh, and will not be having to use assistance for walking around or actually uh, having to use wheelchairs just to get around. I mean, it is an obvious sign of aging. But muscle does even more than what you know it does, which is keeping you strong and able to move around. Muscle in your body takes 80% of your blood sugar and turns it into energy. And for that, you have to have enough muscle and you have to have metabolically active muscle. So basically, if you are using your muscle, if you have enough testosterone and if you're feeding your muscle well with animal proteins, which is what muscle is made out of, then you will be able to burn the calories that you eat unless you overeat. So that's important to staying the same weight because as we get older, we gain fat, we may not get heavier, but we gain fat where our muscle was if we don't use our muscle and we don't feed our muscle and we don't have testosterone. So the three things that we need are testosterone, exercise, activity. We need a diet that has a lot of animal proteins in it to rebuild our muscle. And um, we must actually stay active every day, not just go work out twice a week, but active every single day uh, and use all of our muscles. So why does it work like this? Because most people think our muscles are there. You have muscles, you've built muscles, they just stay there and they do what you want them to do. But here's how muscles work and here's how all your, basically all your tissues work. Throughout our lifetime, we are growing new muscle and breaking down old muscle. So after we're done growing and we are in the adult years, our growth of muscle and our breakdown of muscle is equal. Of course, unless we start lifting weights or doing some new activity and we may grow more muscle, then we break down and then our muscles get bigger and stronger. However, at the time that we lose our testosterone for women after 40-something and men after 55, we don't build as much muscle as we break down. The breakdown is still breaking down at the same rate. But the building of muscle, no matter how much you exercise, is still not enough to keep your muscle mass the same and to keep you as strong. So that's why... <laughs> It's very important to have that one hormone that allows you to grow muscle and grow it and break it down at the same rate so you don't get frail. Now, one of the other things that um, muscles, muscles do and how they work is that when you exercise, I have a lot of people who come in and they say, I exercise every day and I'm, I'm on, you know, I'm getting on the uh, body composition and Every day I, or every week I look at and I have less muscle and I'm exercising all the time. Well, if you don't have the testosterone that you need to build new muscle, then you are going to lose the muscle mass, even if you work out, because every day you work out, you are breaking muscle down and the following day you are, you need to rebuild it. You actually use muscle up as you exercise. So if you don't have the hormone that makes it build up to uh, compensate, you could actually lose muscle by exercising. If you look at um, middle-aged runners, well, running is mostly a lower body activity. And if you look at their body compositions, you'll see that they have very, their muscles on their legs are, are not big, they're not strong. They have very slender muscles. And that's because they're exercising every day. They only, um, I have a friend who does marathons and she only rests one day a week. So they're using those muscles and they don't have that time, even if they have testosterone, to build their muscle back. You're supposed to exercise a part of your body every other day so that one day you break down the muscle, the next day you build it back. That's in the ideal circumstances. But if you exercise every day, you're going to actually not be able to build up enough muscle, even with testosterone, to build bigger muscles or stronger muscles. That's just how uh, muscle tissue works. So 
you have to you have to exercise, but you should exercise every other day if at all possible. If you're going to exercise every day, which is fine, good for your heart, then exercise the lower body one day and the upper body the next. And then that gives the lower body time to recover from its exercise. And then the upper body, that's why lifters do that. They do an every other day program where their, their area of their body is worked out every other day so that they can recoup and build muscle after they have exercised. So that's, a, that's just a piece of information. If you want to build muscle and you eat properly and you exercise properly, then um, you will also, um, and you have testosterone, then you'll be able to build better muscle. The uh, relationship between muscle and your metabolism is kind of a new thing. A recent article, 2023, uh, revealed the relationship between muscle mass and diabetes. Now, they were talking about the percentage of muscle mass and how the percentage of muscle mass drops as people start getting more resistant, in, insulin resistant, and higher and closer to diabetes. So they found that when we have, when we have a low muscle mass, not as much as we had when we were young or not as much as we should have. And they have, they have calculations. We have it in our in-body machine, which shows if you have enough muscle mass for your height. Um, they found that you are putting yourself at risk for getting diabetes. And by doing that, that puts you, you at risk for heart disease, and that puts you at risk for early death, believe it or not. So they did not look at the relationship between testosterone and building muscle. But as we know, you need testosterone to build muscle throughout our lives, even though we don't have as much testosterone as we get older. But that's kind of the unspoken uh, piece of information. So yes, as you lose muscle, you are at higher and higher risk of getting diabetes, heart disease, and an early death. Part of this has to do with what muscle does for your body. Muscle isn't just about moving around, it's about using up your blood sugar. So as it uses up your blood sugar, it is sensitive, actually, to your insulin, and insulin carries the blood sugar into the muscle cell so that it can actually exercise, it can actually work. So you take extra blood sugar, it's going into your muscle and you're using it up with exercise and you're building muscle. If you have more muscle, then you can use more blood sugar and you can use it up and you don't have extra blood sugar in your blood, which is diabetes. If you have a lower amount of muscle, you don't have as much volume of muscle mass to actually take care of all the blood sugar that you're creating with your diet and you have extra sugar and it has to go somewhere. It has to make fat or it has to stay in your bloodstream and actually increase your blood sugar, which is diabetes. So that's why muscle's so important. They didn't spe specify this um, in terms of hormones and aging. They just showed people who had low muscle mass and had a high risk of diabetes and death. Another um, study showed a relationship between muscle mass and death and found that the more muscle you have, the lower your risk of mortality. So, um, we know that you can't have great muscle as you age if you just leave yourself alone and don't replace your testosterone. So that is what they found and proved that the increased risk of death occurs when you become frail. We all kind of knew that, but the study proved that. There was another study in men, in only men, that showed that the uh, testosterone um, level was associated with thicker bones and um, estrogen in men decreased the cortical bone strength, made them have more osteopenia. Bone, and they said bone must have tension on, on it and, and muscle is what the tension is. Okay, so if you, if you are, say you're lying in bed because you're sick and you, you, can't, you can't move and you're just lying there, you're not using your muscles at all, 
then not only do your muscles shrink, but so do your bones, because you're not pulling on the bones with your muscles. Every time your muscle contracts, then the bones that are beneath the muscle and are attached to the muscle are actually being pulled. That pulling keeps the muscle, that keeps the bone strong and thick. So they proved that uh, decreased bone strength and decreased bone thickness occurred with a lack of testosterone in men. So what does this mean? This means that it is very important to stay healthy, eat animal products for the for the building blocks of muscle. It's important to do weight training or resistance training, which just means rubber bands where you're using resistance, which does help your bones, does help your muscles. Uh, you also then, as you age over the age of 40 something or 55 if you're a man, you do need to make sure that your testosterone is at a high enough level that you can maintain your muscle mass. And if you're starting to lose muscle mass the more you exercise, then it's very possible you need to check your free testosterone and your testosterone to see if it's enough. Because that's a sign that you are too low on testosterone for your particular genetics. Everybody has a different need in terms of testosterone. It has to be individualized. So if you need more testosterone than you are actually making, then your muscles are not going to get strong, stay strong, and be strong throughout your life because you don't have enough testosterone to rebuild. You also have to watch the, the uh, days that you exercise and not over-exercise because you can lose muscle that way as well, as we, as we discussed. But it will keep you healthy longer without diabetes, without heart disease, and without an early death to keep your muscles strong and to keep them strong doing all the things that we just discussed. So please hear me. I don't want to see the next generation of people and my patients um, losing their muscle mass and being unable to get around and unable to be independent and live independently. So this is, this is all for you. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.